this a few weeks ago on Wednesday night, not this particular sermon, but, but the, the imagery here. In the book of Genesis chapter 9, Genesis chapter 9. Whoa. Look better on my computer. I'm going to have to get my glasses. Then God said to Noah and to his sons with him, I now establish my covenant with you and your descendants after you and every living creature that was with you, the birds, the livestock, and all the wild animals, all of those that came out of the ark with you, every living creature on earth. I establish my covenant with you. Never again will, I, will all life be cut off by the waters of a flood. Never again will there be a flood to destroy the earth. And God said, this is the sign of the covenant I'm making between me and you and every living creature with you, a covenant for all generations to come. That's you and I. That's us. I have set my rainbow in the clouds, and it will be the sign of the covenant between me and the earth. Whenever I bring clouds over the earth and the rainbow appears in the clouds, everybody say, appears in the clouds. I will remember my covenant between me and you and all living creatures of every kind. Never again will the waters become a flood to destroy all life. Whenever the rainbow appears in the clouds, appears in the clouds, I will see it and remember the everlasting covenant between God and all living creatures of every kind on the earth. So God said to Noah, this is the sign of the covenant I've established between me and all life on the earth. Revelation chapter 4. Now this is where we were a few weeks ago in our study on Wednesday night. John goes to heaven in a vision and he sees this. After this, I looked, and there before me was a, a door standing open in heaven. And the voice I had first heard speaking to me like a trumpet said, Come up, and it was Jesus. Come up here, and I will show you what must take place after this. And once I was in the Spirit, and there before me was a throne in heaven with someone sitting on it. And the one who sat there had an appearance of a jasper, and that's actually... Sardis, same, same, same thing, the Sardis stone. A rainbow resembling an emerald encircling the throne. Now I want you to notice that. A rainbow resembling an emerald encircling the throne. You may be seated. Now there's a lot of magnificent, all-inspiring natural phenomena on the spinning planet. But of all of them, I, I don't know if any ever registers as high on the all Richter scale. Nothing so more beautiful, more attractive than that of a rainbow wrapped around the throat of a dying storm. People pull over just to take pictures. People come out of their houses just to see the rainbow. We love rainbows. You have to pass through the darkness. You have to pass through the blackness of the hour. And all of us have been there when the thunder rolls. And it sounds like, you know, a B-52 goes over top of our house, shaking like the sands of Iwo Jima. It feels as though that the battle of Gettysburg is being fought in our front yard. The lightning flashes. The thunder rolls. The, the, the windows shake. And as the lightning flashes, it, it looks like a 4th of July grand finale outside. And all the birds have quit singing. All the kids have quit playing. All of the life is just at a standstill. Your electric goes out. And then in a moment, it all subsides. And as the rain is gently hitting your window, you look outside to peek to see if it's gone. Oh, there's still dark clouds out there, but you see that awe-inspiring rainbow, and it inspires you. It inspired the poet to write of it. It inspires the artist to paint it. It inspires the orator to try to explain it. 
But you got to know this. Storms produce rain, and rain produces rainbows. Or should I say rainbow, rain makes rainbows possible. Storms produce the rainbow. The glory of the stars is revealed by the dark night. The tempered steel comes from a hot furnace. The fragrance of costly perfumes are crushed flowers. And pure gold is a result of the fire. But what did Peter say? Think it not strange concerning the fiery trial which is to try you as though some strange thing has happened to you. Don't be bewildered. Don't let this thing knock you down because it's only that you have to go through the fire in order to come out like gold. So after the storm, that's the that's the, that's the message, is the promise. After the storm and in the cloud, it appears in the cloud, is the promise of God. Now, I want to tell you this. God is reality. Everything else around you may be a facade. Everything else around you may be an illusion. And I don't mean that we're living in somebody's dream, philosophical dream here. That's not what I'm saying. I'm just saying nothing appears as it is. Nothing appears as you see it most of the time. Because what is here today will be gone tomorrow. What you see today will not be here in a few years. We're in a big election cycle right now, and everybody's fighting over this. One's fighting this one, that one's fighting that one. But let me tell you something. If the Lord tarries, four years will have passed, and we'll be right back in it again. It's just over and over and over. Same old stuff. So what am I saying? God is a reality. He's the only thing that remains. He's the only thing that never changes. As a matter of fact, speaking of his deity, he's the same yesterday, today, and forever. 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 And forever. And when God makes a promise, he keeps a promise. Now, you may be a promise breaker, but God's a promise keeper. And God says, I will put my bow in the clouds as a promise. You see, there's something physical that you can see. There's something physical that you can know. And, and you know what I've learned in my life? And that is God is not just some mystical religion. He's not just some mystical experience. God is a reality. He's a reality in my life. And you know what is also a reality? The flood. The flood. There's enough evidence for a flood on planet Earth. There's more evidence of flood that there has been a flood than there ever will be of evolution because there is no evidence of evolution, but there is a mountain of evidence for the flood. And in that flood, he destroyed the world except eight souls in an ark, and you know the story. The flood came, and the flood was real. End of argument. God is real. But the message in the flood is God gave the world a second chance. A second chance. And may I just give you a footnote here. Thank God for a God of a second chance. Amen. Matter of fact, thank God for a God of a millionth chances sometimes for some of us. Thank God. But you see, the fact is, uh, he is a God of a second chance. And that's what that rainbow represented. Uh, you see, uh, God said that I'm going to put the rainbow in the cloud. Uh, and that's when the rainbow was first seen. It was after that storm of 40 days and 40 nights. And then after the water subsided and they landed, uh, he looked out and saw that great rainbow. And it's to say, Noah, that's your promise right there. And can I just say this? If I don't say it again, I may say it again. And that is the rainbow not only represents God's promise uh, that he would never flood the earth again but it is a it is a it's a a general promise uh, that it, it represents all of God's promises uh, and so when you see a rainbow you need to look up and say God is a true God God is a just God God is a God of mercy uh, and God is a God of grace uh, and if he promised it he will bring it to pass uh, you see God said I will set my bow in the cloud uh, before the flood there wasn't any rain did you know that where does it say that in the Bible? Well, you got to read between the lines. <laughs> You're good about that anyway. Might as well do it reading your Bible, too. It doesn't say it never rained. Well, you know, that's, that's the whole point. Uh, they never saw it rain, and they thought he was a kook. Just like they'd never seen the second coming of the Lord, they think, I'm a kook. Hello? And so the flood came. 
And the clouds subsided there, as I meant the clouds were still there, and, 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 the, and the water subsided, and there was the bow. It was a reminder that God is God. It's a reminder, it's a symbol of all the promises of God. And can I tell you, there's thousands of them, thousands of them. So it's not a symbol without a substance. That's the point I'm trying to make right there. It's not a symbol without a substance. And God is never without substance. But I want you to go with me right here and understand that God didn't say that I'm going to, I'm going to give you, I'm going to put the cloud, or I'm going, to put the, I'm going to put that bow out on a sunny day. The rainbow is always connected with a word that's not desirable. It's a cloud. A bow is always joined to the cloud. The rainbow's in the cloud. The bow is in the cloud. I do set my bow in the cloud. Uh, God never said he'd set it out on a sunny day. He didn't even say I'll set it out on a partly cloudy day. He said I'll set it out in the cloud. After the storm, when it all is said and done, uh, it'll be a symbol of the promise right in the very clouds of life. Uh, can I tell you, God knows what he's doing. Uh, you, you've got to try trust him and his promise. Too many of us, we want to believe God just on the sunny day. We just want to believe God when good times are on the roll. We only want to believe God when things are just going right for us. And it seems like every step we take is a good step. But let me tell you, it doesn't say every step would be a good step. It said every step of a good man was ordered of the Lord. And sometimes you got to go through hell on this earth. And sometimes you got to tread through the water. And sometimes you got to go through the flood. And sometimes you got to go through hell on this earth uh, but thank God heaven is the promise uh, if you'll go through God said I'll be with you uh, I'll never leave you I'll be there all along the way now notice before the flood came, and I'm going to have to hurry but notice before the flood came that God said get all the animals in the ark they got in the ark and then Noah get in the ark in your family and he got in the ark but that's not what it says God said to Noah, Noah, come in the ark. <laughs> Read it for yourself. He said, Noah, come in the ark. What's that saying? It's saying, brother, he's in the ark. He's in the ark. He's with you in the storm. He's with you in the dilemmas of life. You see, people don't understand. They think the promises of God are just on the sunny days, they, and that's it. But God said, no, I'll put my rainbow in the cloud. My promise is not just in the good times, but it's also in the bad times. Uh, I, I, I will take and I'll set my bow, my promise, in the clouds. Uh, where does God set his promise? Uh, he sets it in the traumas of life, the dilemmas of life, uh, the situations in life uh, that seem to be bigger than we are when, tra when tragedy strikes. Uh, because, you see, you don't need the promise when all the good things are going on. Uh, you don't need the promise of God when there's just good times and good times are here. Uh, you don't need the promise of God, I'll never leave you until you're alone. You don't need the promise that I'll heal you till you get sick in your body. You don't need the promise uh, that I'll forgive you till you've sinned against God. Uh, you don't need the promise I'll strengthen you uh, until you get weak. Uh, you don't even need the promise that you'll live again until you die. Uh, but the good news is uh, if you know he who has rose from the dead on the third day, uh, he is the resurrection. Uh, when you die, he'll set his bow in the cloud uh, and you'll rise up as he rose up uh, because he's alive, you're alive. Uh, and because he lives, you shall live too. Amen. See, I don't need the promise of God when I'm not in the dilemma. I don't know if I'm getting my message across here today. Y'all are awful quiet. Where did all your excitement go? It's the promise of God in the dilemma. That's what this message is. God didn't say I'll give you some good things as long as you, you know, as long as nothing goes wrong. As long as everything's hunky dory, that's what we used to say when I was a kid. Everything hunky dory, baby. I never knew what hunky dory meant. I hope I'm not saying curse words. I did make a statement one time in church, and I, I just blurted it out, and and uh, and it was it's a it's a it's a phrase that they use in England, <laughs> and. Uh, and I didn't think anything about it. And one lady used to go to our church was from England. She looked at me, her eyes got white. She said, no, no, Pastor, don't say that. You don't know what that means. Well, I do now. 
the hunky door. Nobody straightened me out on that one, okay? Everything's fine. We don't, we don't really, you know, we think God only operates, you know, when everything's fine. But I, I, I want you to know, God is always in operation. God is always working. God is always on guard. God is always looking, and he's always with you. God says, I have life, but I have to give it to you in death. I have joy, but I have to give it to you in sorrow. I have hope, but I have to give it to you in despair. I have light, but I have to give it to you in darkness. As a matter of fact, Jesus Christ is heaven's answer for earth's questions. Jesus Christ is heaven's light for earth's darkness. Jesus Christ is heaven's water for earth's thirst. Jesus Christ is heaven's bread for earth's hunger. Jesus Christ is, is heaven's life for earth's death. Jesus Christ is heaven's joy for earth's so uh, sorrows. Uh, and guess what? Uh, Jesus Christ is heaven's justification uh, for earth's condemnation. Uh, Jesus is just the opposite uh, of my problem. Uh, he is the solution to my problem. Uh, he is the bow in the cloud. Uh, he's the promise of God in the storm of life. Uh, he's there when nobody else is there. Uh, he's there when nobody wants to be there. Uh, when everybody forsakes you. Uh, when everybody runs down the road the opposite direction. Uh, I can tell you God is still there uh, in the storm. Uh, you've asked yourself this week uh, well, God where are you? Uh, it doesn't seem like it's working out in my life. Uh, it doesn't seem like that Bible's working. Uh, let me tell you something. You're only reading just part of the scripture. Uh, you've got to read all on. Uh, all things work together for the good to them that love God the call according to his purpose uh, but you see it's not going to work out until you go through it uh, you can't have a testimony without a test uh, you've got to go through the fire uh, in order for the fourth man to show up uh, but you've got to go in uh, but the good news is God is with you just that simple I'll set my bow in the clouds to say you know what Noah, my promises are yea and amen to them that believe. I'm with you. You want his promise. You want his answer. You want his power. You want his help. You want his comfort. Well, you have to give it or you have to take it as he gives it. I'll set my bow in the cloud. It's a sovereign act of God. You can't change it. We've been sold a bill of goods to think that you get saved and everything's going to go fine. That's just the opposite of what the Bible teaches but we've told people that. Maybe I will get on a little bit of this. I didn't know it. We've told people, come to Jesus and all your troubles will be over. Jesus said, come to me and all your troubles started. Just begun. You'll be hated, persecuted. They're not going to sit with you at the break table. <laughs> you're kidding. He said, they'll kill you shoot you. Well, they didn't say that because they didn't have guns, but they'll beat the devil out of you with a rock. Amen. Some people think the devil beat out of them with a rock. Somebody say amen. But uh, what, I'm, what I'm saying is that, that, that he didn't promise us roses. He promised us thorns. But he said, I'll be the rose in the thorn. You can't separate the promise from the problem. you got to see the promise in the time of dilemma. Why would the Bible say, Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I'll fear no evil, for thou art with me, if you never go through the valley of the shadow of death? Why, why would it say, if any sick among you, let them call for the elders of the church, anoint with oil, and the prayer of faith shall save the sick, and the Lord shall raise them up, if you never get sick? Why would the scripture say if we confess our sins, he's faithful and just to forgive our sins if we never sin? He said, I'll send you another comforter. It's just the Holy Spirit. Why would he tell us he's going to send us a comforter if, if, if we never had times of discomfort? Why would he say, they that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings as eagles. They shall run and not be weary. They shall walk and not faint. Uh, if you never get weak in life, See, that's the fallacy of all this presidential thing going on right now. That's the fallacy. They want to make these people look. I don't care which side you're on, okay? I don't care if you're voting for 
whoever. Uh, I, I, it doesn't matter. They try to make these people look like they're superhuman. They're super people. Uh, that, you know, they never get sick. Uh, they never get weak. Uh, they're always on the top of their game. Uh, it's a lie, and, a, and, and the devil's the father of it. Somebody say amen. Uh, they all get sick. They all get weak. They all get diseased. They all have problems. Uh, all of them's hairs fall out. Amen. Uh, everybody has trouble in life, okay? Uh, but let me tell you something. Uh, Jesus, didn't. he promised that if you'll walk with me, I'll walk with you. If you go with me, I'll go with you. Amen. So wait upon the Lord. You're going to get weak. Every precious and exceeding great promise of the word of God can be seen in the cloud. It can be seen in the dilemma. It can be seen in your trial that you have faced this week or last week or for the last year as far as that goes. Huh. One time Silas, when he's a little bitty boy, was telling him about Paul and Silas. I was telling him about at midnight hour and he was intently listening. I said, son, that's who you're named after. Silas. He got to thinking about it. He said, Daddy, do you ever think when we get to heaven that he might get me and that other Silas mixed up? <laughs> I said, no, son, don't you worry about that. He knows his own, and he knows that Silas. He knows you, and there's a few other Siluses too. But I felt that way at times. Haven't you? Felt like he got, God kind of, God, there must be some kind of glitch on your computer. For you said, have you considered my servant guy? And I'm going through the trial. And halfway through, God said, oh, I made a mistake. I meant to say Job. Ooh. Ooh, I'm going to fix this now. But I felt that way. But he never makes a mistake. Never makes a mistake. And so what you have to go through, you have to go through. Like one old preacher said, when the Lord uh, tells you to, that, uh, when the Lord sends you tribulation, he expects you to tribulate. You, so when you go through the storm, guess what? He's not going to get you mixed up. He knows exactly who you are. He knows exactly how many hairs on your head. They're numbered. Hey, he can count the stars and knows them by name, and he knows every one of us by name. And he knows every one of us, and that's interesting, though, too. The Antichrist at the end is only going to know people by a number. The American government only knows you by your number, and everybody knows everybody by their number. What's your number? Give me your number. Let me tell you something. Uh, God knows you more than just you're not just a number to God. Uh, you are a person. You're a people and you are known by your name and on that resurrection morning he's going to speak your name he's not going to say well number four four six ten one two three come forth come forward no he stepped up to the tomb and said Lazarus Lazarus come forth and he's going to step in your tomb too wherever that is whenever it is and he's going to call you by your name oh yeah life in this flesh is very temporal and full of trouble Full of trouble. I'll set my bow in the trouble. I'll set my bow in the cloud. And Paul said, We look through a glass darkly. But after a while, we'll see face to face. You know, literally, that means the promise shall be made clear. See, it's not made or made clear right now. Sometimes we wonder what's going on. You know, the rainbow in Genesis. It's mentioned here is a rainbow on the earth. It's in the form of an arch like we see with those seven colors of the spectrum. Beautiful. It reminds us that God will never leave us nor forsake us. It reminds us that he loves us. It's the promise of God on the earth to Noah and to the perpetual generations, which is you and I. But the rainbow we see in Revelation chapter 4 is different. I'm not here to get off on the color. We've talked about that a few Wednesday nights ago, but it's the shape. For a rainbow on the earth is in an arch. But the rainbow in heaven, it said, will circle around the throne of God. Is that important? <laughs> you better believe it is. The most beautiful rainbow I've ever seen in my life was seen at 35,000 feet in the air. I was looking out the window because I like a window seat when I'm flying. 
And if you're going to crash, I'd like to see where I'm going to crash. <laughs> and I looked down, and in the cloud was a perfect rainbow. You ever seen a perfect rainbow? A perfect rainbow is just that. It's perfect. It's not arched. It's encircled. There was a perfect circle below me. And as I looked at that, it came to my mind the scripture. The rainbow was encircled around the throne of God. It wasn't a half rainbow. It was a whole rainbow. It was a complete rainbow. It was a complete circle. What's the point? The point is, from God's point of view, you only see half of the promise. But from God's viewpoint, from up above, he sees the full circle. He sees all of what's going on. We get all caught up in all things working together, and we wonder how they're all going to work together. And God said, let me figure that one out, because I can do it. And so... When you only see half and you're, all, you're, you're depressed, you're discouraged, you see half, I, I, I believe you, Pastor, but you don't know what I'm going through. I don't know what you're going through, but he's been touched with the feeling of all your infirmities. He knows exactly what you're going through, and guess what? Uh, and it's all said and done. When we're with Christ, we will be with him. You'll understand it more fully. All things will be made known to you. Uh, everything will be complete, uh, and all your questions will be answered, uh, and all your sicknesses will be healed, uh, and all your depression will be gone uh, and all of your diseases will be eradicated uh, and we'll get the full promise of God. Uh, our problem is a lot of times, and I'm talking about the preachers today, we're trying to take the promises of God and making them all complete today. They're not all complete today uh, because the bad news is you're going to die, but the good news is resurrection lives on the inside of you uh, and you're going to rise out of the grave uh, and so you can't make all the promises. You're not going to understand all the promise of God today, but let me tell you, you'll understand it better by and by. Uh, one day when you stand in his presence uh, one day when you stand in the throne room of God uh, and you see what John saw uh, and you see that perfect rainbow enwrapped around the head of God uh, you're going to know then fully uh, yes we look through a glass darkly uh, and yes we can't see very clearly uh, but one of these great getting up mornings uh, everything's going to be changed uh, and you'll see everything like God sees it uh, and then you'll say oh that's what you meant Lord that's why it's only in the cloud. It can be seen in the cloud. It's just that you can't sometimes see God. I know that. Somebody said, I can't see any hope. I can't see any answer. Because you're looking at the storm. You can't see God in the storm. You've got to get beyond the storm when it's all over in the clouds. In the clouds, God puts the rainbow. In the clouds, the dilemmas of life, he's there. See, our problem is, is we, we see the storm, and that's all we see. But the storm will pass. But the rainbow will remain. You know, in the 10th chapter of Revelation, there's another angel. This is a mighty angel, and I don't know. Uh, a lot of commentators think it's Jesus Christ, but I have a feeling that it's not. I think it's a great angel. But e e either way, he too had it. He's about to pour out a great wrath upon the earth, and he had a rainbow about his head. Encircled him. That's to say that even in this day of a world tribulation, God still has grace and mercy. If you wait for the clouds to leave, you won't see the promise of God. I put my promise in the dilemma. I put my promise in the cloud. And if you can't see him in the cloud, you're going to miss it. See, the purpose of every storm is for you to look up and see him in the cloud. To see him in the dilemma. <laughs> the devil's scheme is to get you redirected. One dark, dark night on the Sea of Galilee. The ship was about to go down. Little boat, I should say, not ship, but the little boat was about to be sunk, they thought. When all of a sudden out there on the water, it's pitch dark, my friend. Did you ever think, how did they see Jesus? 
Because Jesus is like a light bulb. The Mount of Trans Transfiguration. You remember that? We talked about that. You see, at the Mount of Transfiguration, it wasn't that the glory came on him. No, the glory flowed out. And on that night, that dark night on the Sea of Galilee, I want you to know out of him was, I believe, flowing the light, the glory of God in his presence. Uh, and that's how they recognized him. And first of all, they thought it was a ghost. And sometimes we think that Jesus, when he comes to us, uh, that it is the devil that you know all this is in my life because of the devil no he's coming to share his glory with you and he has glory in him and you got to see him in the storm and they saw him in the storm uh, and it inspired Peter he said Lord is it you is it really you uh, and if it's really you bid me come out on the water uh, and Jesus said come uh, and that was enough faith to inspire Peter to get up out of the boat step out of the water and start walking toward Jesus uh, you see he he saw Jesus in the storm. When you see Jesus in the storm, it'll keep you afloat. It'll keep you up. It'll keep you from sinking to the bottom. But the devil redirected his attention. You remember that? He redirected the attention of Peter, and he started looking around. He saw the waves and the wind, and I've always wondered, how can you see wind except for the evidence of the waves? But still yet, he saw the storm, and he saw it. Probably lightning was flashing and thunder rolling, and all of a sudden, he just lost his mind uh, and he took his eyes off Jesus and began to sink. Uh, you see, that's what I'm trying to tell you. Uh, if you take your focus off Jesus in the storm, then you're missing the point of the storm. Uh, the point of the storm is that you might see him, uh, that you might glorify him, uh, that you might praise him, uh, that you might lift up your hands and say, uh, I'm going to walk right out of this valley, uh, lift my hands and praise the Lord. Uh, ain't going to let old Satan get me down. Uh, I'm going to trust him in the fire. Uh, I'm going to trust him in the flood. I'm going to trust him in the storm. I'm going to trust him when this whole world is on fire. I know there is a living God and I'm going to trust him. That's what I'm talking about. That's what's going on here. How can you know a fourth man in the furnace if you never get in the furnace? Love to preach that sermon. Love to hear that sermon preached, Pastor. Just don't want to live it. Don't want to get in the furnace. But they did. They got in. Oh, and I know, man, we preach. You know, they were delivered from the fiery furnace, and praise God they got out. You're getting out of your trial, too. Well, sometimes you don't. But he's always there. But gee, here's the deal. What really excites me about the story is not so much that the three Hebrew children got out. What excites me is the fourth man got in. Do you get what I'm saying? You, you, you've got to shift your attention, your focus. You've got to see what's going on. It's not so much that there's a storm, uh, but Jesus is in the storm. Uh, and in that storm, there's a rainbow, and that rep rainbow represents his grace. Uh, and who is grace but Jesus? Uh, that, that rainbow represents mercy. Who is mercy but Jesus? Uh, he was clothed. Uh, he was mercy draped, uh, uh, mercy draped in flesh. Uh, he took on the dying the, the cloth of man. But let me tell you something. He shed it on the third day. He's got a glorified body now. He sits at the right hand of the Father. He's making intercession for us. And he's coming back again. And so keep your eyes on the Lord. Oh, yeah. See, <laughs> I can't see him sometimes, can you? One little boy who was scared said, Daddy, Daddy, Daddy. He said, come here. I'm scared. I'm scared. I'm scared. It's dark in here. He said, don't worry, son. Jesus is with you. He said, Daddy, I know Jesus is with me, but I'd like to have something with some skin on it. <laughs> that was my Silas. We used to travel, had a travel trailer. I mean, it's only 35 foot long. We're only 35 foot from him. And he slept up at the front, we slept at the back. He, says, he said, Daddy, I'm scared. I said, son, don't worry about it. I said, it's all right, Daddy's right here. 
I'm just right here. Look, Daddy, I don't see you. I said, but son, I see you. He said, don't worry about it. I'm with you. That's us. Like little children sometimes, we get in the dilemmas of life and say, where's God at? God said, I'm right here. I'm just right. I'm closer than 35 foot from you. I'm right here. I can't see you. He sees you. I know you can't always see him in the middle of the storm when the thunder crashes like a thousand cannons and the lightning streaks across the sky in awesome display of power. And again, the birds are silent. The kids quit playing in their games. Uh, and the sheets of rain begin to beat against the window. Uh, you know, you really can't see God. Uh, but hear me, child of God. Hear me, child of God. Hear me, child of God. Uh, can you hear me? Uh, listen to me. I got a word for you. Storms don't last forever. Uh, did you hear me? Uh, I said, storms don't last forever. Uh, one of these days, it's going to go away, uh, and it's going to be a bright and clear day then. Jesus said, when the world is in the storm of hell, and there's wickedness all over the world, come, come back to the instruments. And the wickedness is to the left, to the right, in front of you, all around you. What'd he say? Hang your head. Wring your hands. Get up underneath the bed. Put a football helmet on. No. He said, then look up. You know your redemption draweth nigh. And I don't have to tell you this, but there's hell in our streets. And government. It's an, government is an illusion. I thank God for America. Don't get me wrong. I love America. wouldn't want to be anywhere else but America. But it is the governments of men. And that's why you have so many shysters. That's why you have so many corruption, so many corrupt people. It's not just one. It's all of them just about. There may be one or two that's okay, but get them up there and they tempt it like the next man. But that's not our answer. Government's not our answer. Government will no longer be here one day. <laughs> but he's saying when you see all these things, don't lose your heart. Don't lose your head. But lift it up. Look up in the cloud. For your redemption draws nigh. Where are you supposed to look? See, that's your problem. That's why you're so distressed. You're looking around. You're saying, oh, my word. Who, well, who's got an answer around here? You're looking at the wrong place for the answer. Look up. Up, 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 up. That's where the cloud is. That's where the promise is. The promise is in the cloud. When Jesus left this planet, there at the Olivet, after the Olivet Discourse, On Mount Olivet, the Bible said that a cloud came, stepped up on him. He said, go in the world and preach the gospel to every living creature. And then the cloud rose, took him away. Peter, James, John. at each other pretty bewildered not what is going I thought he was going to set up his kingdom they're scratching their heads they're only seeing half of the circle they're only seeing half of the promise they only saw half of the rainbow they thought he was going to set up his kingdom they literally thought he was going to reign as king in his perusia, his full presence. I mean, 
mean, they had just witnessed it a few days before that on the Mount of Transfiguration and all the things he was saying and what he was talking about. And, you know, this is going to happen. I know it's going to happen. This is probably, this is going to be, and then here comes the cloud. Where's that cloud? What's that cloud doing? What's Jesus getting on that cloud? Jesus, uh, they didn't say anything. I don't know if I'd have said anything either, but they just watched them. They're dumbfounded. Didn't have an answer. Out of their sight. All of a sudden, an angel stepped up and said, <laughs> I bet that gave them a scare too. They're all looking up, and all of a sudden, an angel steps up behind and puts his arm around and probably said, We got an angel with, you, with us. Angel said, Why stand you here gazing up at heaven? Didn't you hear what, I'm, I'm paraphrasing a little bit, didn't you hear what I just said? Go in the world preach the gospel. Go preach it to the world. Because here's the message. He's in the cloud. He left in the cloud. But as you, why stand here gazing as he goes to heaven? Because this same Jesus you saw leave, uh, he will come again in like manner as you've seen him go. Uh, what's that telling me? He went in a cloud, he left in a cloud, he's coming back on a cloud. Uh, understand that. Uh, he's coming back on a cloud. Uh, and so what should I do? I should keep my eyes on the cloud uh, because in the cloud is the rainbow. Uh, in the cloud, the dilemmas of life, the troubles of life, the problems of life. Uh, it lets me know the promise is still there. He is coming coming back again. I can guarantee you that. You can get discouraged all you want to get discouraged. You can try to throw in the towel and say, I'm done with that. But let me tell you, I ain't going to change anything. This same Jesus is coming back. This same Jesus is going to come back in like manner as you've seen him go. But until we get there, he's with you. Because that's what he said. And lo, I'm with you until the end of the world. So there you stand looking, where's God in my problem? I don't see. And God says, I'm right here. Let me just illustrate one story. A little boy had gotten an invitation to go to a birthday party. It meant everything in the world to him. He wanted to go so bad. He had plans. But he did not know that a northerner had blown in. And with it came blizzard-like conditions. Went to his father and said, Dad, it's almost time for the party. I Can I go? And the father looked into his eyes. He could see the hope. He could see the anticipation of his son hearing his father say, you can go, son. He didn't want to let him down. He said, sure, you can go. Go ahead. It really shocked the little guy. It's what he wanted to hear, but it's not what he thought he was going to hear. He ran to his room. He got his coat, his mittens, his galoshes on, put his old stock cap on, went back in the living room, said, Dad, and Dad's sitting there reading the paper. Said, yeah, son, I'm leaving now. You know it's just down the street. I know, son, it'll be all right. Okay, Dad, thanks. He went out the door, shut the door behind him. It was blizzard. But he knew the right direction. Couldn't see very far, but he knew the right direction. So he started trotting his way towards his buddy's house. What normally would take him five minutes, ten minutes, took him almost 30. But he finally got there. He was on the porch, rang the doorbell. His 
but he came to the door. And then he turned. He saw a figure retreating. It was his father. Just making sure. Lo, I'm with you. Always. Always. And when you don't think he's there, he's there. I promise you he's there. I promise you. Don't doubt it. Father in Jesus.